Filters can be used in conjunction with layer masks to subtly smooth the look of skin or other rough surfaces in an image. One specific filter that does a nice job is called the surface blur. We'll cover filters in more detail later in the semester, but for now, uh, we thought it'd be good to experiment with using the surface blur for retouching purposes. The steps we'll follow are, first of all, duplicate the layer. Do you think they've for, heard that enough in this lecture? <laughs> well, even if you haven't heard it enough, we're going to continue to say it because you have to always remember to do it and get in the habit of doing it. Um, then make the new layer a smart object by right-clicking and choosing to convert the layer to a smart object. Then up in the filter menu, you would choose blur and then choose surface blur. You would adjust the thresh threshold and radius settings for your liking. The threshold adjusts how much or how little of the image is edited. Radius adjusts how much blurring is applied. And when we get to an image, we'll actually show you how those work, and hopefully that will make more sense, and we'll describe it in more detail at that time. Um, if you find the changes too drastic, you can always consider lowering the opacity on the change layer to make the adjustment look more subtle, or you can paint on the layer mask to remove the blurring in unwanted areas, which is what the um, this smart object with the filter would, um, would give you. And a layer mask to work with. All right, so if we look at the examples here, and this is the example that I'll, um, I'll show you here in a minute in a, in a demo, but um, here are the steps. So first you'd make the background and copy that and create a smart object. Then going to the blur and the surface blur, you would get the surface blur dialog and here you'd have the opportunity to adjust the radius and the threshold both. So here you can see the example of some default settings and some high um, uh, blur to, um, to the image. And you can see the before and after here and how much blur is being applied. And the surface blur is really cool because it will only target, depending on that threshold, it will only target these areas with lower contrast. So, so the skin would be the item that's selected. So you don't have to actually go in and select this. It will know that this is what you need to smooth versus the eyes and the teeth where there is more contrast. So here is um, some final examples here. So here um, is the original image and here is with a lot of surface blur and here is with the um, opacity adjusted to lower the opacity, so um, you kind of combine the effects and you blend these two um, together to make it more subtle and more of a not so noticeable change, but nonetheless a, a good change. What's super interesting is if you look at any of the individual images, you might think, well, none of them look too horrible, right? But if you bounce back and forth and you compare two, you can see that the first one, she has rougher skin. And then the middle one, it kind of looks okay, but when you compare it to the one on the right-hand side, you can see how just making it slightly more subtle makes it look slightly more realistic. And that's always the goal for this retouching. You don't want it to look like you've made a change and that it looks like you've done retouching. You want it to look really natural. Okay, so let's see if Photoshop will work for us today, and we'll go through the steps here um, and demo this here. So here's the image, and um, first off, we'll start by duplicating the background layer, and I can click and drag it down there to duplicate. Um, that's just another way to duplicate the background layer. There's always a lot of ways. And then um, by right-clicking on this oops, here, we can convert it to a smart object. And that would be the next step that you'd want to do. So smart object preserves the pixels, and making a smart object is always a good thing to do as part of your non-destructive editing. And as a bonus here, um, you'll see when we apply the blur, we'll have a layer mask, and we'll always be able to go back and refine and change that, that filter because it's a smart object. So now, we'll go up here to the filter. If you apply a, a filter to a smart object, does it become a smart filter? That is a crazy thing to say. Yes, it does. 
So this would be a smart filter. All right, so here, and these are some default settings that are coming up. So the radius here is um, at seven pixels, and we can increase or decrease that radius. Wow, did you see that blow out when you move it to the right? Oh, it's... watch it on the screen when you slide this, the radius to the right. It, hang oh, on, it it's sharpened. It looks like horrible. No, go all the way to the right. It looks like horrible cosmetic surgery. See how yeah. powerful it is? You don't want to do that. Yeah. But anyway, so we'll leave it around the seven pixels. That seems to work. Now, the threshold it will increase that area of the blur. So if you increase the threshold, you can see that it goes into these high contrast areas. So the threshold is probably the most important part here, and you definitely want to keep that on the lower end so you can maintain these areas of contrast and just affect these lower contrast areas, which would be targeting the skin. Um, so with here, with the threshold at We'll leave it at nine and say okay. Um, and you'll see here that, oh, look at that. It is a smart <gasps> filter. It's a smart filter. <laughs> I love that it when things get smart on you. <laughs> that is so cool. All right, so here we can do a variety of things. So um, one of Jessica's favorite things, that, and one of my favorite things too, is to lower the opacity to kind of blend that change and not make it so, um, so overwhelming and kind of blend that together. If we leave that at 100%, we can also go into this layer mask here and with the paintbrush, let's see where the paintbrush is. Aha, there it is, my old eyes. I'm gonna go ahead and choose black because black will hide and I'm going to turn down the opacity of the brush and also um, make it a nice soft edge. And I'm gonna go in here and paint. And that also can reduce the look on areas that you want to blend more. So you can do either of those things um, for, uh, for this adjustment. So you can use the layer mask or you can use the opacity adjustment to blend. You have lots of options. And you can always, because it's a smart filter, you can always go in here and um, uh, open it back up and, oops, and change and manipulate the radius and threshold even more beyond what you've had. And that's a really great benefit of using the smart object. It remains fully editable and you can always go back and change it. Excellent. That could be, I don't know, one of the questions on the quiz. It could be. So remember it that. Could be.